Ngam Hiotewa. Leading the news today is the APEC summit in Bali, Indonesia. New Zealand's Prime Minister has held bilateral meetings with his counterparts from Malaysia, Chile, Peru and Canada. John Key also met with China's Xi Jinping, discussing food safety for much of their 45-minute meeting. Mr. Key believes the Chinese president will appreciate how, how seriously New Zealand treated the recent botulism scare and that the Chinese president's goodwill is critical for repairing New Zealand's damaged reputation. And Mr. Key is being urged to raise the issue of the Arctic 30 at APEC. Green MP Gareth Hughes says the APEC leaders' meeting is the perfect opportunity to lobby Russian President Vladimir Putin to release the protesters. He says Australia has already raised concerns with Russia and New Zealand should be following that example. A New Zealand journalist detained in Egypt has been released from custody. Campbell McDiarmid, the deputy managing director at Egypt's Business Today magazine, and British freelance journalist Adam Ramsey were detained in Cairo while covering a rally. Thousands of military supporters marched to mark the anniversary of the 1973 Arab-Israeli war, but the rallies turned violent, killing at least 44 people. And twin raids by U.S. agents have nabbed major terrorism figures in Somalia and Libya. The Somali government says it cooperated with American intelligence over the operation against a suspected al-Shabaab militant there. But Libyan authorities claim they knew nothing about the capture of a key al-Qaeda engineer, bomb instructor and communications expert from his home in Tripoli. In local news, electoral boundaries are to be redrawn for next year's general election. Census data released today shows a new general electorate will have to be created in the North Island ahead of the 2014 poll, and that substantial redrawing of electoral boundaries will be needed in Christchurch and Auckland because of shifting population demographics. There is some disappointment at the news that there won't be an extra Maori seat in Parliament. Population growth and an electoral option campaign has not been enough to create an eighth Maori electorate seat, which Labour MP Rino Tirikatene suggests is due to the Maori party's internal struggles, which in turn has discouraged Maori voters. And in other news, police have released analysis of evidence in the Bain family murders, which they say points away from the theory implicating David Bain's father as the culprit. Police say scientific tests have debunked claims that gunpowder residue caused the marks on Robin Bain's fingers. And international energy chiefs anticipate a major industry shakeup in the decade ahead as more shale gas and renewable power becomes available. A PricewaterhouseCoopers survey of 53 power and utility companies from 35 countries shows that almost 70% of companies in Asia expect some transformation, while 8% believe their business models will become unrecognizable by the year 2030. Well, those are the headlines for Monday the 7th of October from the Rima Newsroom, Mauriora.